the goods market and the IS curve. Now let's try and understand what is the IS curve. The IS curve shows different levels of interest rate and output such that the planned spending is equal to the income. Please understand this thing. Different levels of output and interest rate. I'm taking Y here, I here. This is my IS curve. So my IS curve is showing different combinations of interest rates and output. So it is telling me this is combination A where interest rate is this, output level is this. This can be another combination where interest rate is this, output is this. This can be another combination where interest rate is this, output is this. But they are on the same IS curve. So, you know, such that the planned spending is equal to income. So, this IS curve is derived in the background from this equilibrium that we studied in the previous chapter, where we said that this is the 45 degree line, this is AD. And at this point, we know that the planned spending. And actual spending are equal. We know that here in this level, this part, we know that there is some IU, unplanned investment. Here also there was some IU, unplanned investment. Demand, aggregate demand and actual output were different. But wherever the two are same, all those points are shown by the IS curve. So the IS curve is showing different combinations of interest rate and income. We will derive it, but just understand the definition for now. Different combinations of interest rate and income such that in the background, the planned investment is equal to the actual investment or the planned spending is actually equal to the income. Now to derive the IS curve, there are two steps to it. Step one, we link interest rate and investment. So please understand, what is the IS curve doing? We want interest rate as part of the IS curve. Because I want interest rate as part of my IS curve, I have to bring interest rate into the model, right? So how can I bring interest rate into the model? I know that my AD is C plus I plus G plus NX. Interest rate cannot affect consumption directly. Interest rate cannot affect government expenditure. Interest rate cannot affect net exports. The only way how interest rate can enter my model is through this level of investment. So step one is to go ahead and introduce this interest rate as a function, you know, investment as a function of interest rate. And once I have done that, then I'm going to go ahead and link investment demand and aggregate demand. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, investment is a function of interest rate. But after this is done, bring this investment back into the AD function. This is what I'm going to do. So let's start with investment first. Now, let us try and see what is in uh, this case now. So I'm saying investment is a function of interest rate. I'm also saying that investment is an inverse function of interest rate. So I write this as the investment function. When interest rate is zero, then I is equal to I bar. So if you're not asking for any interest on the loan that I take for my purpose of investment, then I will do the maximum investment. If interest rate increases, then investment will decrease. If it is above zero, then as interest rate keeps on increasing, my investment will be lower than I bar. Right. I know that this is a negatively sloped function. 
Now I'll just compare this with the mathematical equation. What's the mathematical equation that we usually have? We have y is equal to mx plus c. This is the equation that we have where this becomes the intercept and this becomes the slope. So, you know, if I compare this equation now with the equation that we have, that i is equal to i bar minus bi, then I can rewrite this thing as i is equal to minus bi plus i bar. This is the intercept of the investment function. And the slope of the investment function is this, minus b. So negative slope, of course, it's downward sloping. And I understand that the slope actually in this case, this b, what does this tell me? This tells me what, what, what is the slope actually? How do you define the slope? Slope is perpendicular by base at the slope of any line. So if I pick up any line and I ask you, what is the slope of this line? You will say perpendicular by base, right? What is perpendicular really? Perpendicular is change in whatever comes on the y-axis. Whatever comes on the y-axis upon change in whatever comes on the x-axis. For our investment function, our what is coming on the y-axis and x-axis if I have to kind of uh, understand investment is coming on the y-axis and investment is a function of interest rate. So I is coming on the x-axis. So, you know, if I have to ask what will be the slope of this line, the slope will be how investment changes. Mathematically, I'm writing dy by di. How investment changes when interest rate changes. So I'm saying that this B is how investment changes when interest rate changes, or I can say that B is the sensitivity of investment. How sensitive is my investment decision to interest rate? How much am I going to change my investment whenever there is going to be a change in the interest rate. Now, think about this. Supposedly, I give you two equations. y is equal to 40 minus 2x and y is equal to 40 minus 3x. Suppose I give you these two equations. Now, I ask you the following question. I ask you plot this and plot this. For this, you will take the two extreme values and plot it. So you will say when x is 0, y is 40. When y is 0, then x is 20. And here you will say when x is 0, y is 40. But when y is 0, x, by, x is 40 divided by 3. And 40 divided by 3 is 16.67. Right? So, 13 point. Sorry, not 16. 30 point something. Because 13 into 3 is 39, right? 13.3, approximately 13 or 14 is what you can take. Now, if I ask you to plot this, how will you plot this thing? You will take y here, you will take x here. When x is 0, both the lines give you 40. When y is 0, 1 gives you 20 and the other gives you 13. So this line is flatter and this line is steeper. What's the slope of this line if I may ask? Minus 2 or 2 in absolute values. What's the slope of this? 3 in absolute value. So in absolute value, 
whichever line has higher slope that line became steeper that line became steeper now if i talk this back here b is my slope of the investment function so as b increases my investment function should keep becoming steeper right so if i go back and i draw my investment function now i know when interest rate is zero my investment is i bar i know that this is i bar minus b i the slope of this line is b negative b but an absolute value b and supposedly i tell you b is 0.9 and i give you another value for b is equal to 0.98 as b increases as the sensitivity increases because in the background the slope is increasing and i just just showed you that if the slope is more the line becomes steeper in absolute value if the slope is more we just comparing this to y is equal to mx plus c and m is the slope so in absolute value if the slope is higher this line had a higher slope then this line became a little steeper so as b increases your investment function keeps becoming steeper as b decreases your investment function becomes flatter when we were having this the earlier investment function that we drew then in this case actually investment was not sensitive to interest rate at all so it was completely flat let's go back to the slide once so investment is no longer treated as exogenous it's not determined outside the model but it depends on the interest rate investment is inversely related to the interest rate as the interest rate increases investment decreases this is because interest rate is the cost of borrowing money and that money that you borrow that is used for investment as interest rate increases because you are borrowing money at a higher rate you are paying more this reduces the amount of investment demand so an increased interest rate raises the price to the firms for borrowing the capital this reduces the quantity of the investment demand